All right, guys, we're going to talk about the gastrointestinal area system. And right now we're going to talk about upper GI, chapter 41. Um, in the beginning of your chapter is uh, nausea and vomiting. Um, now we're going to really be covering uh, some of the more of the diseases or syndromes. Nausea and vomiting. Uh, was covered in foundations when you did uh, fluid electrolytes and elimination. And uh, when we think about nausea and vomiting, we think about it as a symptom. Um, now, if you treat the cause, the symptom goes away. Um, table 41-1 is a nice reminder of medications for nausea and vomiting. And um, you just do want to review some of those and be familiar with some of those and any side effects. Uh, so, but in short, your nursing interventions for nausea and vomiting uh, would be treatment of dehydration. Moving on, uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, not a disease, but a syndrome. However, they haven't changed the name to gastroesophageal reflux syndrome yet. So we still, um, we still for uh, abbreviation, cause it, uh, call it GERD. So it's caused by a reflux of gastric contents into the um, lower esoph esophagus. Uh, the uh, pressure decreases in that distal portion of the esophagus and gastric contents move from the stomach to the esophagus. Some risk factors include certain foods. So keep in mind that diet can be a huge factor for um, educating and health promotion uh, to, of course, decrease that or to control sim, uh, symptoms. Risk factor, obesity is a risk factor, pregnant women, and think about that. Why are pregnant women an increased risk? Well, you've got the increased pressure on the diaphragm and all of your uh, intestinal contents being moved up so that uh, that can cause uh, excess pressure. Um, Cigarette, cigar smoking can, can contribute. Hiatal hernia. Uh, why is hiatal hernia? Well, think about the patho on the hiatal hernia and where it is. Now, keep in mind, GERD is the most common upper GI problem seen in adults. All right, so some of your symptoms. Um, heartburn. Uh, it's the most common clinical manifestation. And it's a burning, tightening sensation um, it, in the lower sternum, throat, or jaw, right? You, re, you see that on the slides. Now, more often than not, that is what some of, some of these symptoms are experienced as. So what else does that sound like? Uh, remember in cardiology? Uh, well, it kind of sounds like it could be um, cardiac related, but we want to make sure that uh, the uh, that there is no um, heart involvement. So, if a person presents to the ER with these symptoms, we would do uh, a EKG. We would do um, measures to determine that it's not heart related. Now, most individuals have mild symptoms, so um, the heartburn after a meal um, maybe doesn't occur with every meal, uh, but there's really no evidence of any um, impairment of the stomach lining or the esophageal lining. Now, some individuals might report respiratory symptoms, and why do you suppose this is? Why do you suppose wheezing and, and coughing can occur? I'll wait for a second for you to think about that. Okay, well, wheezing and coughing can occur because if you have gastric contents, now are gastric contents uh, pleasurable or, or like think about the pH of the gastric contents. So that those gastric contents are irritating an area that is not used to having that type of um, acidity. Uh, so that irritation can occur. To, um, to the trachea, to the vocal cords. Uh, people can experience hoarseness with that, uh, constant sore throat. Uh, so 
Um, nocturnal coughing with loss of sleep. Now think about that. If obesity is a risk factor and more or even uh, pregnancy um, and they're lying down, they, they experience more of that uh, pressure. Um, so if uh, persistent reflux um, occurs more frequently, more frequently, it's considered chronic in that patient. Now, what are compli uh, complications of reflux? Uh, frequent complications. So, if you're constantly having um, a, a constant acidic irritation to your vocal cords or to your throat or to your esophagus, um, you can uh, have uh, cancerous lesions or strictures or um, erosions. So your diagnosis and treatment. So again, like if somebody comes in for chest pain, we were talking about we want to make sure, you know, you're doing an EKG, you're doing measures to make sure it's not, a, a, if you're ruling out a, um, a, a cardiac involvement. But here, you we are ruling out, um, we're trying to understand what the path, uh, pathology, the pathophys of uh, for to confirm the presence of gastroesophageal reflux uh, disease. So you have um, your history and your and your physical exam. That's your best friend. Um, so it's often based on that history. It's based on if you see if the patient is obese and they're experiencing those um, those symptoms. Uh, typically, if if you know one of the one of the key is. Are you experiencing this discomfort after eating? Well, that leads you more into um, into heartburn uh, manifestations. Um, now, some of the other diagnostic studies, so biopsy and cytology specimens, that is all. That's to rule out um, other etiology. It's to rule out um, erosion, um, any lesions that are seen, to rule out cancer. Um, in addition, biopsy specimens might be taken to look for bacteria and some specific bacteria that can cause uh, irritation. Now, um, esophageal manometric motility studies, think about the anatomy and the function. So think about what those motility studies are looking for. So if, they're, if one is, if they're, is swallowing and they're looking at the motility, if there's an impairment, if there's some kind of um, anatomical abnormality that's causing a leak of that um, acidity. Um, so um, treatment, lifestyle modifications, um, nutritional therapy. So some of the things that you avoid, like avoiding chocolate and peppermint. And what does peppermint do? Peppermint relaxes the sphincter. So what would relaxing the sphincter be? That would allow the uh, gastro contents um, to uh, run rampant in that in the plumbing area. Um, so some drug therapy. Now um, the, the the drug therapy is not in order of what um, one would start with. One's going to start with the antacids first. Then one's going to move into the H two blocker. So if the ant, so think about what their these medications doing. The antacid is neutralizing the stomach contents. The histamine blocker is uh, the histamine two receptor blocker is uh, like such as um, famotidine. Um, that is stopping the um, the release, right? And then your proton pump inhibitors like um, protonics or Nexium. Those medications are actually stopping the production. Um, so you're, you're kind of, you, you know, you want to make sure, you know, obviously the stomach acid is used for a purpose. So you want to try if some antacids are helping. Uh, remember the body um, uh, always is working in, in conjunction with each other, trying to um, to cohabitate with everything. And so the, uh, the reflux is something that is abnormal. So we want to see if we can 
uh, decrease some of the symptoms with the least uh, amount of measures, such as the antacids. Surgical therapy would be failure of all of these methods. And really the goal of the surgery is so that um, you're, you're preventing uh, uh, long-term damage. Okay, so what can long-term damage do? Um, or what can long-term um, acidity or uh, uh, damage to the gastric mucosa? So that's called gastritis. So that's inflammation of the gastric mucosa. Remember, itis is inflammation. <clears throat> Now, uh, if you're thinking about some of all of the causes, we do know that certain medications can cause the inflammation. And some of those are anti-inflammatories, such as ibuprofen, such as um, Advil, okay, Aleve, those medications that can irritate the gastric mucosa. We know that steroids can do that. So, so when you're thinking about your education of these medications, you're thinking about what? You're telling these patients to... Uh, eat with them. Um, so because those things wear down the mucosa or that stomach lining. Um, some of the other factors, the Helicobacter pylori or H. pylori, that's a bacteria that a biopsy can determine and it can um, uh, it, it can wear down the mucosa as well and even cause ulcers. Um, smoking, stress, uh, so all nursing students are at risk for gastritis, um, also because you're probably taking your ibuprofen for your headaches that you're getting from staring at all these screens. Um, trauma, uh, so uh, gast because trauma uh, is a type of stress. NG suction, now uh, you will be doing, uh, learning the NG tube, um, skill but so N ng suction if you have the tube that goes all the way into the stomach and it's sucking out gastric contents well it can also um, start a, it can attach it uh, to the stomach lining if it's not um, placed properly <clears throat> and um, and cause like a, a hickey on that stomach lining area okay so then um, we lead into a little bit more damaging. So peptic ulcers. So if you're, this is the, the corrosion um, or when you have erosion, um, the worst case scenario is uh, the, uh, the bleeding occurring if you have erosion of any mucosa. Um, now table 4114 has, um, talks about gastric versus duodenal ulcers. Both are considered peptic um, uh, ulcer disease. Um, and so you, you can kind of look at the difference between gastric ulcers, more women, duodenal ulcers, more men. Um, but the treatment is the same for both of them. Um, and just kind of like a reminder of how these medications work. And then worst case scenario, um, or the last treatment would be uh, peptic, uh, would be uh, gastric resection and actually remove that eroded part. So remember, you're using the least invasive before surgery. Now, complications of um, peptic ulcer disease is GI bleeding. So, um, the uh, uh, approximately you can read that approximately 60% of patients are older than 65 years. So uh, why again with the elderly? Well, we know wear and tear occurs, right? So um, the types of upper uh, uh, GI bleeding. So you have obvious bleeding, which when with somebody throwing up and you see bright red blood, um, the coffee grounds. Um, Assessment is, you know, when when the blood has started to uh, digest a little bit, uh, but it's still up. Um, now, if someone's bleeding and the the blood starts going di is going digesting all throughout the intestines, they're going to have uh, black tarry stools. Um, 
Now, what is not obvious bleeding is, are the sm really small amounts of blood in the gastric secretions, a really uh, slow leak, and you don't see that in stool, um, but you will be able to detect it by GUIAC test. And then, of course, the severity of the bleeding depends on where it's coming from. <clears throat> so which would be the worst? I feel like Dora the Explorer. Uh, look on the map. Map, map, map. No. <laughs> uh, it is arterial. So, um, because the ar arterial blood is the one that's pumping, right? Um, all right. So, um, some of your nursing diagnosis when you're checking, of course, you're with your if you're looking at GI bleeding, you're thinking um, hypovolemia. You're thinking... Um, uh, extreme trauma, but now that's if it's happening uh, very rapidly, not if it is um, just occurring with a slow leak, because remember the body is amazing and compensates for, for itself. So your common causes of upper GI bleeding, esophageal origin, stomach and duodenal origin, Drug-induced origin, so again, that so think about those medications that cause the wear and tear on that mucosa. And then you have systemic disease origin. So what do you do? How you how are you determining this uh, this bleeding? So you have um, endoscopy, and that's the scope that's going down the esophagus and looking exactly what's um, happening. Um, all right, so then. Um, diagnostic treatment, angiography, what? You're saying, it, isn't that for when they're looking at the, um, the heart? Well, it's also, um, it, it's, is, it is able to determine where um, one is bleeding. It goes up the femoral artery and then um, to the, ooh, I can't read my writing, um, to the uh, gastric vessels. Um, to look exactly for the site of bleeding. And then you have your complete blood count, which is what's telling you the extent of the bleeding. Um, so your treatment, your treatment, you want to stop the bleeding and at 80 to 85% stop spontaneously. Your fluid replacement, just for volume, your uh, supplemental oxygen, that's for, you know, like let's say the person has an oxygen saturation of um, 94%. Well, you really want to get that oxygen saturation up to 100% because whatever blood is circulating, then you know has um, uh, the oxygen uh, to perfuse. Um, let's see, what else? Um, drug therapy to decrease bleeding. Um, all right. So um, you want to de decrease the bleeding, you want to decrease the acid secretion, and you want to neutralize uh, whatever acid is present. Um, so you can um, decrease, and, and especially if that's um, related to any erosion. Okay, that completes the upper GI area. Thanks.